Hi, this is Hank Stratton from Half Past Dead Paranormal Radio Show. Join me and my partner, Roger Belt, on Monday nights, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, 6 Pacific, and at 3 in Hawaii on www.cjmarsradio.com forward slash cjmars underscore chat dot html. Join us for guest interviews in the paranormal and strange. Join us if you can't be normal, be paranormal. Everybody, welcome back to Half Past Dead Paranormal Radio. The paranormal is strange. We're coming to you live on WCJV Digital Broadcasting out of Youngstown, New York. I'm your host, Roger Belt, along with my partner, Mr. Hank Stratton. Hello, Hi. everybody. And uh, we've got a great show tonight, folks. We have Miss Sharon Coyle uh, of Rolling Hills Asylum. And I've been looking forward to doing this one. Hello, Sharon. Hi, guys. How are you? Thank you for having me on. Great to have you, Sharon. We are glad to have you, and we're doing just fine. And, boy, i tell you what. I've been doing some reading, and, and the more I read, the more interesting it gets. I'm, I'm, Thank I'm, I'm going to kind of get into my... Uh, the first part that I've read about here is all the different things that that place used to be. Uh, let's okay. see. Where, where was I at here? It was an insane asylum, a poor farm, a nursing home, tuberculosis ward, orphanage, school, antique mall. Good Lord, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Well, there's almost, uh, if you count the original Native American land and then the 1700s, it was actually a stage coach and a tavern out here. It's like over 300 years of history. It really right. goes back pretty far. I remember the stagecoach thing, too. I saw that. Who is, uh, and are they related to you, uh, Lori and Jeff Carlson? No, they're not at all. They were a former owner. Okay, because I, I read some stuff about when they were there. Right. And... Uh, Let's see. Opened in 1827. Uh, in 1828, a stone building was built for the confinement of lunatics. The insane were also housed there. It, I mean, it's just amazing all the stuff that's went on here. Yeah, it, it really is. It, it, the, the history is just completely incredible, and there's such a plethora of people here. And the, why did they... Uh, this this got me. Why did they consider them all as inmates, no matter what they were there for? I think it was just a generic term. You know, it's easier than saying, "Well, this is a patient, this is an orphan, and this is a widow, and this is a criminal." They just gave it a blanket name. Right, but inmate to me means like a felon, a criminal, a uh, murderer, a uh, rapist. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Well, asylum also has a bad connotation, but in reality, if you look up the definition, it actually means safe haven. So it really is just, you know, various definitions of the same word. Now, I don't know, Hank, if you, if, how much uh, you read into the history, but... I... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish up, Roger. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I read something about a cemetery that is there, but it's crumbled to the point where nobody knows where it was. Well, actually, um, they didn't really have a cemetery. They had a potter's field, which is a big, huge field with unmarked graves. And originally, there was 105 acres of land in 1827, and then it grew, um, and it, it ended up encompassing almost 
200, 300 acres of land. And then later on, the county started taking back some of the property. And that property is now the Genesee County Park, which is adjacent to the 11 acres that I own. And so the Potter's Field is physically now in the park. But that land was originally the, the original land to the property. Wow. Now, are, is there any records as to how they would keep, uh, how would they say, those that were morally bankrupt away from the more normal and hardworking individuals that were trying to sustain the, the asylum? Well, they really, they really didn't separate them all that well. Um, you were really just segre- segregated by sex, um, unless you were really, you know, so bad off that you'd have to be either um, put into solitary confinement or one of the detention rooms or even um, in one of the psych wards, faculty room kind of thing. So it wasn't. It's not as bad as it necessarily implies or sounds. I mean, when you're when yeah, you're dealing, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No. Oh, anyway, so when so when they're dealing with, and there's no other way of saying it, uh, people who were habitually uh, drinking and those who literally were insane. They were in another populated area, separate from from the working people. Well, not too much because that stone building that they built for, as they labeled it, the lunatics, uh, didn't stand very long. They ended up tearing it down after a few years. Um, as time went on, they did begin to separate some of the people, such as the widow of the, the orphans, ended up going to an orphanage. Um, and then some of the, the more severely mentally unstable got shipped off to, like, Willard or other um, full-on insane asylums. But because it was established as a actual poorhouse, um, it was really a hodgepodge in the beginning. But then as some of these other uh, other locations started to become um, more popular, they started moving them over to those locations. We're jumping back and forth here, but uh, concerning the, the Potter's Field or whatever... I read that they have records of over a thousand deaths on the property. Are they, were they all buried in the Potter's Field, or not all of them? Actually, there's um, there's over seventeen hundred documented deaths. My opinion is really there's probably double or triple that many. Um, records are spotty. There are there's the main Potter's Field. There's a temporary Potter's Field. There's another another burial ground that I know of um, in the area. Then there's also, if you had any sort of relatives that had money, um, they are buried in other locations. In Batavia, there's a cemetery. Um, it's on Harvester. It's a regular, you know, public cemetery. And some of the people are buried over there. And I actually talked to the cemetery master um, that's in charge of that cemetery. And he said that the people from here are buried 10 to 14 deep. They're one on top of each other. It's really horrible. Wow. That's that's amazing. Now I have a question. Uh, Toby has uh, typed in. Uh, Sharon, do you know how how many ghost hunting teams have you had there? <laughs> oh well, no! I wish I knew. Um, I, I honestly couldn't even tell you. I mean, I've, I'm going on my fifth year. I bought it in 2009 in October. Moved here in March of 2010. We're open year round. Um, on the average, where you know we have hunts at least four nights a week, sometimes six nights a week. Uh, we have public and private hunts. So I mean, honestly, I I wouldn't even begin to fathom. I mean, I could probably do a, a quick mathematical guess, but it would just be a guess. I mean, it has to be hundreds. It's not more. Well, now I uh, I don't know. I- Ghost Adventures has been there, right? Yeah, they actually were here twice. We had Ghost Adventures, and then they uh, they did a spinoff called Paranormal Challenge, and Zach came back for that. And then we also had Ghost Ghost Hunters were here way before I bought the property. Oh, really? And then, yep, that was in 2005, way before I bought it. And then also um, we had American Horror Story come film here. We had some independent films come film here and music videos and things of that sort, so... 
Okay, now I recall something about a, a, a film that was shot there, and I could not remember the name of it to save my life, but I remember oh. there. Yeah, well, thank you for leading into that. Um, it's actually called The Haunted Boy by with the Booth Brothers. Um, I actually uh, associate produced a, a portion of the film with them and did the casting. Um, they, it, the whole movie is based upon the true story of The Exorcist. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, the real the real person in that it really happened to wasn't a girl. It was actually a boy, and he grew up in St. Louis. So the the boys, the Booth Brothers, had gone to St. Louis and did all the documentary background story, you know, going to the real locations and interviewing people from the church and so forth. And then it came to Rolling Hills, where we filmed all the reenactments of things and the flashback scenes, and that's why we needed the actress for that. And it actually just got renamed and reboxed as The Exorcist File, Haunted Boy, and it was released on July 15th on in Redbox um, at all the local stores that are around the country. You know, you know when you go to a supermarket or whatever, and there's the Redbox video store or DVD store, and you just check it out right, right at checkout, um, which is leading me up to, I'm very excited, we're actually going to have the Boot Brothers come back October 31st and November 1st for a two-night Halloween event. It's going to be great. We're doing a reunion with some of the actors and crew, and it'll be really amazing. Oh, if I could just inherit my castle in Scotland and, and all the land so I could sell it so I could be there. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I promise you the tickets won't be that expensive, and it'll be a really great night. Living here in Washington I has a little, a few, few disadvantages as to being right there in the hub of everything, being able to, to see you there at uh, Rolling Hills Asylum and then uh, Iron Island Museum and mm-hmm. all those other wonderful places that we only dream about. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. It's difficult. I mean, when I was living in California, I couldn't get out this way at all. And so I know how it is. And the airfare these days is crazy. Crazy. Oh, uh, I have, and, and I don't know who caught this, but it, it says that basically several people have seen a, an elderly lady uh, apparition entering the women's restroom. Mm, I don't, I don't know that. Um, I haven't seen her. We have a lot of different apparitions. Um, I haven't seen one entering specifically in the restroom, but we have. I've seen full body apparitions like walk out of an elevator that is, you know, completely chained up and inoperable. Um, we've had people see apparitions walk in through the back door and down the hallway or sitting in a chair down at the end of a solarium, sitting in the wheelchair. I mean, it's not uncommon at all to see people. Okay. Uh, what about Roy? What about Roy? He's my, he's my buddy. He's my favorite. I love Roy. He's, uh, he's pretty amazing. He's, uh, he's really a gentle giant. He, he, he was born March 4th, 1890 and died April 11th, 1942. He was close in about seven and a half feet tall. It's pretty big. Well, I mean, I, I, I read that, uh, he was dropped off there as a child, that he grew up there pretty much and, and was there until he passed away and he was in like 71 or so. Or no, he 60? was only 50. He, no, he was only 52. He was oh, really? 52 years of age, yep. We think he had gigantism, which gave him his extraordinary height, and his, his features were oversized and so forth. So basically, his heart probably just gave out. He was just a really sweet gentleman, um, very smart. There wasn't anything wrong with him. He was very intelligent. He was uh, all self-educated, um, you know, read a lot of books, developed a really quick taste in music from opera and classical all the way through to the Rat Pack. Um, he tends to be a bit of a ladies' man. He's got a really deep voice. Um, some ladies actually just sent me an EVP that they got from him. It was uh, they were here just a couple weeks ago, and they were here the year before on one of their birthdays, and they were in Roy's room, and they were they were asking Roy to um, to dance with him with them and wish him happy birthday. And so you could hear Roy say happy birthday, and then when they kept asking him to dance, he goes, "Oh, I don't know," like so shy, very sweet. Well, not, I'm sorry. I remember seeing uh, an episode of, uh, it was one of the paranormal shows, and I can't remember which one it was, where they were talking about they saw Roy's uh, apparition or something. And uh, was it there that they had that big box that this guy was claiming he could capture spirits in? No, that I believe um, was Trans Allegheny. I remember the episode. Okay, I couldn't remember if it was there or not, but it seemed like I remembered uh, some paranormal group that was there that 
TV famous type were talking yeah. about Roy being there and they saw his apparition or whatever and I mean well, he's, very, he's very prominent in the building I mean people you know see his, his form walking around quite a bit we get a lot of EVPs from him I've heard him with my ears quite a bit and through spirit box he's very interactive all the spirits are we have a lot of people in that building sometimes we know their names sometimes we don't um it depends on if they want to share it with us. We have a lot of people that are communicative on a regular basis, which is really good. Okay. Uh, uh, Johnny in the chat room was asking, how did you first find out about Rolling Hills? I guess that it was for sale or? Well, I actually had been out here on a Darkness Radio um, Ghost Hunter event in 2008. Um, it was June 12th, Friday the 13th and 14th. And I was out from California on an event. And uh, had a great night. It was great three nights, actually. Um, got to lot of you, got portions of, of Roy on camera and uh, a bunch of other really amazing, amazing photos. I mean, I'm talking nothing to do with the work. I mean, like amazing stuff. And I uh, was just really excited about it. And went back to California, and I had a private group of three and a public group of 250 people. And uh, didn't think I'd ever, you know, come back to western New York or Rolling Hills. I mean, I was busy with other things, and... There's a lot of locations in the United States, and New York is a bad winter, and, you know, it wasn't on my radar. But then in the spring of '09, I heard it was closing down, and it was like a, a light switch went off. I just kind of melt, had a meltdown, basically. I was worried about the property closing down. It was, you know, really historical property. I was worried about the spirits being left alone. They're very intelligent. They're very a communicative haunt, haunt. It's a very intelligent haunt, as opposed to residual. And... uh I guess the rest, as you say, is history. I mean, I bought it the day before my birthday. Wow. Okay, Cole, you're on Yes, you do. (laughs) Roger Belt. Hello. Hello. He's here. I'm here. Yeah, we're here. (laughs) You hear me? You're breaking up, caller. I wasn't going to touch that. Hello. Maybe his, maybe his maybe his house is haunted like mine. <laughs> no. You're still breaking up, partner. Must have to up. Hey, can you hang up and call back? I hope he tries again. I think that was Gabe. Okay. Uh, carrying right along. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you about Emmy, who was the nurse that everybody said was so cruel, that was cruel to the uh, inmates, and also the staff was scared of her, and she was supposedly into dark magic and Satan. Yeah, so, no, that's really kind of a lot of misnomers. First of all, she really doesn't like Emmy, she likes Emma. We got an EVP of her saying, no, Emma. So she really doesn't like to be called Emmy, even on her headstone, it's Emma. Um, and she was actually not as bad as people thought. I mean, it's like that old telephone hand game. You know, you say something to your friend, and by the time it gets down to the third, third person in the row, it gets misconstrued. Um, we did discover, after trial and error, um, the re- she really had that reputation because she really didn't... She was giving men a hard time, men investigators, and saying really nasty things to them. Get out, hit you, leave you, you know, leave, get out. All these really, like, I'm going to kill you kind of things. And we started doing experiments, and we discovered that basically if the men would knock at the door and introduce themselves to her, she was much more receptive to um, to actually being communicative with them. And if you actually, I'm sorry, my dog is, like, going crazy. I think someone just pulled in the yard. I'm sorry, hold on one second. I'm just trying to get him to calm down. We're going to go give him a cookie as I'm talking. Yeah, um, mine's over there scratching at the door. <laughs> So, um, anyway, basically, it was impossible for me to be in a woman's room unless you're married to her back in the era because she was born in 1890 in Germany. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And so that's why she had a reputation for her being mean, like, in general. Um, but also, she was, she was just a very hardworking, dedicated woman, kind of tunnel vision. She might have even had a touch of Asperger's, for all we know. Um, she was just very literal. And I kind of relate to her in a, in a little bit because I'm German, I'm Scorpion, I'm German, I'm like a mud, I got four different things in me, but, um, you know, being, you know, German and Austrian and French and Irish and 
you know, being a Scorpio and being very hardworking myself and very tunnel vision myself, sometimes you get very clipped in your attitude with people and you don't mean to. It's just that you've got so much on your plate that if you're trying to answer questions from people that are firing questions at you and they need your help or they want to know how to do this or that or the other thing, you're trying to get them off and off and on their way to get their job done. And so you kind of get abrupt and clipped and so you can get off on your own, you know, path and get your own stuff done. And I do that quite a bit, and I know I do, and it's very difficult sometimes because I'm not trying to sound clipped. I'm just trying to say, okay, you need to get your stuff done. Let me answer your questions. So you can go on your way, and I need to get my stuff done. And so I think she was a lot like that, and I really do relate to her in that way. Okay. Uh, Johnny asked, when the building is closed for the winter season, do you experience not. Your normal activity? At your we're house, not closed. which is on the grounds? We're not closed. We're open, <laughs> open year-round. God bless you. We're not closed. We're open year-round. We're open in the winter. Okay. Now, do you live in the main building, or do you live in a building on the property? I live in a building on the property. In the, uh, it was a barn that used to be the woodworking shop uh, where they built furniture and caskets. It was built in 1827, and it's uh, about... A third of a football field away from the main building. Okay, and it was converted to a house back when uh, Lori and Jeff previous, lived there, right? A couple of previous owners before that, right. Okay, well, that's what he wanted to know. Do you experience activity in your home that's on the property? Not really. Um, when I first started coming to look at the property, um, I made it very clear to them that if I bought the property, they would have to give me a buffer zone and respect my privacy. And they really do. I very, 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 very rarely have any issues with anybody coming down here. Um, if I happen to be really, really sick or something to that effect, they may come and check on me. But overall, they really do respect my privacy. I know it sounds ridiculous, but they do. No, it doesn't sound ridiculous. I mean, we, for myself, and uh, you've been noticing. Oh, oh wait a minute. You're, are you on the? Uh, are you in the chat room? Um, when my internet isn't coming in and out tonight. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, one of my uh, one of my team members, we did his house, and those that are left, he set boundaries, and they mm-hmm. respect those boundaries. If you give them, if you if you give them what they're allowed, and give them their due respect. They will, they will adhere to it. I totally agree. People don't realize that. I mean, they're just people. They just don't have a physical form. You know, and I, I get people to come in here and I can always pick them out in the crowd which ones are nervous about being here. And, you know, I ask them, well, oh, I don't know, I'm really scared. You know, something's going to hurt me. I'm like, they're just people. They're someone's mother, father, aunt, uncle, child, grandparent. You know, they're not Freddy Krueger, they're not Bill Compton, they're not, you know, the swamp monster, they're people, you know, just like anybody in your family. Were some of them good people? Absolutely. A lot of them were great people. Were some of them bad people? Sure. You go to a mall, you're going to do some bad people. Were some people mentally unstable? Yep. Well, you know, how many people are in front of that nowadays? You know what I mean? It's just, they're just a plethora of people. Um, you know, and then people have to go down that demon road. Well, and I have, a, I don't. I'm not a real big believer in the whole word demon. Are there good people and bad people? Absolutely. Charles Manson? Horrible human being. Was he a demon? No. Hitler? Horrible human being. Is he a demon? No. So yeah, you have some horrific people in, you know, in this world and in the nether world. Doesn't make them demons. Demons are rare in my opinion and I've actually spoken to um, people in the religious sect and they, a lot of them really do have the same train of thought as I do. Um, that they're rarer than winning the Powerball eight times in your lifetime. They're so rare. And, you know, people tend to jump on the bandwagon because, it, you know, on the shows they sell advertising. The more the more dark and twisted it is, the more advertising you're going to sell, the more viewers you're going to get. And that's a sad part with what we do. We don't always have the excitement every time we go outside and we're doing an investigation. It's... It's sad to think that. Well, anyway, we've got a couple questions. Sure. I am seeing, uh, do you have any of the old records in the building? Or of I, the main, from don't. the main building? I don't. Unfortunately, um, 
there were some records here, from what I understand, but by the time I bought the property, um, and the property closed when I bought it, the, the records were gone. Um, I am doing research and getting some copies as best I can and starting to build um, some notebooks and things that people can look at, some copies that I keep in what we call the green room, but far cry from getting them. I mean, there's a lot to be printed out. Very expensive. I mean, I have over probably three or 4,000 pages I need to print um, to get caught up on getting things, you know, in notebooks to, to lay out for people to, to view, but it's going to be a long time. To lay out money to print that kind of stuff is not my priority. My priority is to get the gutters fixed, to get the windows fixed, to get, you know, things that are going to maintain the building. You know, all that other stuff will come later. And, you know, you just kind of have to juggle what's your priority. And my priority is staying in the building. So then what about records with the, with the county before all this before Well, yeah, all this that's, where I get, that, that's where I get some of them from. But, you know, you have to go and pay for them to be printed out. So, again... Am I going to drop, uh, money. you know, several yeah. hundred to thousands of dollars on printing out papers, or am I going to put that money to something that's going to protect and preserve the building? All right, Roger. Did you uh, have well, and I'm sure there probably was stuff left behind there originally at some point, but have you ever found any like personal journals or uh, you know stuff where maybe the inmates had written or left and left behind? No, I haven't. And you have to understand, though, the building closed down in 74, 1974, and then it sat empty for 10 years, and then there were three private owners prior to me, and each owner had it for about 10 years. So you have, you know, 40 years of, of the building being empty and or occupied by other people prior to me getting it. So 40 years of people, you know, taking things, removing things, you know, I'm I'm at the bottom end of the spectrum here. You know, I'm the, the last straw of the property. So That's a lot kind of stuff about what I thought, but I figured yeah. you, know, you might have run across something somewhere. But yeah, unfortunately, no. I wish I wish I had. Um, I understand there were there were some things that the previous owner had um, found or acquired, but they're no longer here when I got here. That's sad, though. I mean, and you got to think. You know, I mean, spirits can can give us information, you know, about what things were like, you know, when they were living, when they were there, you know, the, the horrible stuff that they had to endure. But also, you know, if you could have got a hold of personal journals and stuff like that, it would be a way of getting out what they were feeling to, to people, you know, as well as, you know, the spirit trying to tell you what's going on. I know, I know. Well, you know, that's what happens, though. You know, properties get sold and and passed down and things get lost, and it's just it's unfortunate. Oh, I was reading uh, something that came up about the uh, picture of a property. Have you had anyone try to help the spirits uh, rest um, or cross I over? I, again, I have a different perspective on things, and I well, I totally appreciate everyone's point of view. My point of view is not from a religious standpoint, which I believe crossing over is more of a religious standpoint. I believe that we're all energy, and you know, when you die, you revert back to being energy. Energy doesn't cha- you know doesn't go; it just changes form. And in my experience as an investigator and doing different experiments and spirit box sessions and other things, um, I've discovered that spirits can come and go as they please. And so I don't believe that there's some big, white, fluffy cloud that when we pass away, we all go and hang out on for the rest of eternity. That's not my personal belief. So that being said, um, I'm not worried about them. I think that if they don't want to be here, they won't be here. Um, I don't think anyone is stuck and needs to be crossed over, and even if there is that truth in that matter, um, the lay person shouldn't be the one to do it. There are religious people that are, that's what their call on line says, not Joe Investigator. That's my personal opinion. Sorry, I'm, I'm probably uh, offending just, no, a lot no, of people no, right no, now. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, I'm a Scorpio. You ask me something, I'm going to tell you my honest opinion. <laughs> it might not be a not, popular opinion, but it's not, my not honest prob- opinion. Not a problem, because that's one of the reasons that a lot of these places would not want me to, because A, 
I do. B. I don't allow I that. I, okay, that's the other thing that. I don't allow that, it. It's you know, not your place. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I, it's, I, I'm very, I'm very adamant about that. Um, it, it's not. You know, you want to do that, and someone in your own backyard. This is my home, and this is the spirits' home, and they have a right to be here. Who are we? And I'm not being to be disrespectful to you. I'm very appreciative of you having me on your show. But who are we? I'm saying we collectively. Who are we to judge whether or not they should? They want to be here. We're only putting it on they, ourselves. We're putting it on ourselves if, if we want to help them. Only so, if they not, ask, they want. But still, to be we're we're just a lay person. You know, we're maybe we don't know what the real what the real path is on the other side. We won't know until we're there ourselves. We don't know if there's a process that people have to go through. And it's a learning process for them, and maybe they're not ready to move on to whatever step they need to be on. We don't know any of that. We're, we're speculating everything. And so for us to assume that responsibility, in my opinion, is kind of irresponsible. They may wish that they could move on to whatever spot, spot that they need to be in, but what, if there is a higher power that is orchestrating everything, they may have a plan for this particular person that we're not aware of. It's it's like, I don't know, It's I was going to use a really bad analogy. You've got someone in a hospital, and they're on a restricted diet, and you don't know that. You go to visit them. They're saying, oh, I'm so hungry. They haven't fed me in days. Please bring me a cheeseburger. And you feel badly, and you go get them a cheeseburger. Well, they may not have been supposed to have that because they were having surgery in two hours, and you've just screwed up everything. So, you know, we don't know what's happening on that other side or wherever they are. And for us to assume that we know better is kind of arrogant. We don't know what's good for them. Um, I don't know. I just think it's, I think it's an, I think it's an irresponsibility to, to do something like that. I really do. Uh, Johnny asks, uh, what kind of experiences are investigators having while exploring the building and also have your, Experiences of owning the building made you more spiritual. Um, <clears throat> experiences that people had are ad nauseum. Um, disembodied voices, shadow people, full body apparitions, people being pushed while sitting in the wheelchair, people being touched, extreme cold spots, extreme hot spots, um, being nauseous and migrating, disembodied voices. I think I said that. You know the EVPs. <coughs> um, Spirit boxes, door slamming, footsteps, um, things being tossed down a hallway like pebbles or, you know, thing, little pieces of something. Um, I mean, you name it, it is anything and everything you, you practically read about in any paranormal instance. Um, myself, like I said, I'm not a religious person, um, and I've come to that conclusion only based upon um, my own personal life experiences, um, losing people in my life and working within the paranormal field. Um, I I say I'm spiritual. I think what I really mean is that I have a sense of what's right and wrong in the world. I, you know, like, you don't steal, you don't, you know, kill people, you don't, you know, you don't necessarily go out of your way to be mean and vindictive and say horrible things to people. I mean, it's the right and wrong in, in life and, and trying to treat people as you want to be treated. If you want to call that spiritual, I guess it is. Um... But, as I said, I don't have this big religious belief in any direction. Spiritual, in my opinion, is not religious. Correct. But there's an an overlay in some fashion um, to that term. So, like I said, you may want to label me spiritual because I do believe in karma. I believe in the power of the universe. Okay, that's for... That's more along the lines of what I take spiritual as. Exactly. So, I mean, I have, I have, a, I guess, a unique, a unique, a unique way of looking at things, uh, and I don't think I'm alone um, in the way I look at things. I just think it's not the common ground. I'm going through your, uh, I'm going through your web page, and I'm seeing this little clip that you have. No equipment, no problem. So mm-hmm. I've got to ask, what equipment do you have available for someone who's wanting to come through and do an investigation? Well, first of all, they would have to, it's only available if you book a private hunt, which is a quarantine or midweek quarantine, and then you have to 
kind of book this additional package. Um, it's because basically what happens is you're hiring one of my key volunteers or myself to come out with our, our own personal equipment. So I have a, I have a whole set of personal equipment that is available at an additional charge for private groups. Um, but basically it's everything from full spectrum video and, and still cameras, IR video and still cameras, the audio recorders, parabolic, um, dishes, um, you know, the millimeters, K2 meters, um, haunted trigger object, um, items, all kinds of things. I mean, there's like 15 to 20 different pieces of equipment. V pods, RAM pods, um, you know, it's just literally, it's just a plethora of stuff. Night vision goggles. But on a regular open hunt, I don't offer those. Um, it, it's too hard to control, um, renting them out. People rent it and then you pass it on to five different people and then it gets broken and then who's responsible for it because the person that checked it out isn't the person that's returning it and it gets to be costly. So that can't happen. Um, I can't be reinvesting in equipment. I need to reinvest in fixing the building. That's my priority. No, no, you have to have, you have, to have control. You have to. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, people don't need a lot of equipment. Um, I get a lot of newbies and, and first-time people or second-time people that haven't really been anywhere. And, you know, they come with sometimes just their cell phone, and they get amazing stuff, great EVPs on their recorders on their cell phones or amazing photographs. I don't know if you, in your experience, but people that have the Samsung Galaxy, oh, my God, that cell phone takes amazing photographs. And I think it's because it has such a high um, high pixel on there or high... Um, yeah, high pixel phone. It's amazing. Um, you know, so you can come with a recorder or the recorder on their cell phone and the camera on their cell phone and maybe a mag light, which I know it's very debatable. It's very visual for newbies. Bless and it gives, it gives them, enthu- God bless you, gives them enthusiastic about, you know, trying other things. And um, that's all people really need to start off with, you know. And then go to some of these places or go out with some other teams or meet up groups and see what's being used and see how they're working with the spare boxes and what's the difference between the millimeter and the K2 and, and so forth. And then pick and choose wisely. You don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars like the TV shows do. I mean, those things are funded by the networks. Right. Not everyone can afford that kind of stuff. And they shouldn't be um, feeling inferior because they can't because you don't need that. Your body is a great tool in and of itself. Okay, uh... CJ wants to know uh, how the investigations are run from when people come to Rolling Hills and what is the most shocking piece of evidence that you've seen so far? Um, Well, how they're run is we check people in and they fill out some release forms on site. And then uh, we do a a walking tour, guided tour throughout the facility. It's almost 60,000 square feet. And we give you the history of the property and the history of some of the people that live there and some of the paranormal activity that's happened throughout the building. And then later on, um, if it's a public hunt after the tour, it's about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how many questions that happen throughout the tour. Then they go off on their own and they investigate throughout the building on their own, which with uh, whatever equipment that they bring. And if it's a private hunt, people obviously bring their own stuff normally and do their own investigation. Right. And that's how um. it goes down. Out of curiosity, if, say, me and my team came up there to do a, a private overnight or something, how, how would that go about taking place? Well, well, it's the same fashion. Like I said, we give you the guided tour, then you go off, and you set up your own equipment and do your own investigation. We're always in the building. We never leave the building. It's my home. I take it very seriously. I wouldn't hand over my keys to my house like you wouldn't either to some strangers, so we're always in the building. It's for safety reasons. And it's also, we do occasional walkthroughs, and we're available in case there's something that happens. And we want to make sure that people aren't going to be disrespectful to the building. Um, so we're in the building at all times. We're not hovering on you, but we're in the building at all times. Okay. Um, Toby wants to know, he said, what happened with the Ghost Adventures team? You had it on your website, but it was a still shot with no explanation. I'm not sure what you mean, what happened with them. Um, I mean, they came, they filmed, and it was great. They were nice guys. Um, they were here for four or five days. I guess it was about four days. 
Um, and it was great. They're very authentic. They get locked in every night, you know, for the investigation. Um, I wasn't in there with them. And they did their thing. And it was a great show. And uh, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, they're, they, they do quality work. Okay. He said they were not filming at the time. I don't know what you're. Refer- I honestly don't know what you're referring to. I'm I, well, sorry. It's not me. It's uh, uh, one of the guests in the chat room was asking. Oh, that's so, what they're referring to. I mean, if there are I'm pictures not, on the website, it's probably all times that they were here. Either, um, you know, maybe they were taking a break and they were outside doing still shots around the building. I'm not sure. Or maybe they were shots with some of us. I'm not sure what they're referring to. Sorry. Neither am I because I I, I, don't, I didn't see that picture. But okay, he says there is a picture with the main ghost hunter inside the main building. So he must be referring to that. Okay, so it was probably in between filming, and I but I snapped a picture of him in the building. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, it, they were. They were only here for filming. They haven't been back on any special events. Zach was here a second time for Paranormal Challenge with Patrick Burns, Dave Schrader, Gary Gelka. Um, that was the second time he was here. They had, he hasn't been here for any special events or any other time. It was only for Ghost Adventures and Paranormal Challenge. So the pictures were taken during those two filming times. I'm not sure what they want to know. Okay, so he says if they want to be more specific, they can email me and or call me through... Um, the 585 number on the website and or you know I don't know I don't know what they're trying to find out I'm very baffled by the question honestly he said he know. saw a kid behind him don't know are you sure it wasn't just a short person don't know what they're referring to <laughs> I don't know he <laughs> says I saw a kid behind him and I I'm not aware I don't know what he's referring to I'm sorry or she. I don't know. He said no it was a kid, not a short person. I we don't have we don't allow children in the building, so I don't I'm not aware of a spirit being in any of the pictures behind Zach. Maybe they saw something I didn't. I I honestly don't know what they're referring to. He said dressed in like white PJs. Okay, I again I don't know what he's referring to. We you can ask it to me any, you know, variation of this question, I don't know what he's referring to. I honestly don't. Um, I don't get, I don't know what he's referring to. Maybe he's um, very sensitive and he's picking up something in the picture that I'm I'm not. That's, I'm from, I'm that's very I don't possible. know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's referring to, so I, I'm sorry. I can't answer that if I don't understand. So. He says, I well, know I'm going back and forth. Sorry. Okay. Well, that's I, a- I just... I, it's okay. I just wish I knew what he was referring to. I really honestly don't. You I know. put your email up in there, Sharon. Sharon okay. at Willie Hills Asylum. <laughs> I'd be happy if he, wants, if he wants to grab yeah. it off the website and send it to me. I'll look at it. But offhand, I honestly have no clue what he's referring to. Um, I'd love to see what he's seeing. I would, too. <laughs> I really would. I, Hank, put your... Uh your email address uh, up on the he, chat he, room he for has people. It. Oh, for other people. Okay. For other people. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Wait a minute. I, I put Sharon's. you talking about my email? No, it says Sharon at RollingHillsAsylum.com. I told yeah, you to put her email up. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, honestly, I would love to see what he's seeing. Her email. Uh, hey, did you, did you throw her website address up there, too, or... Well, when I threw the whole thing up there, the bloody thing wanted to run everything together. So <laughs> I, I've been, I've been yeah, trying just, to put... Just, I'll do it. It's just www.rollinghillsasylum.com. Dot com. Dot com. That's yeah. all it is. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really... I'm so I'm so baffled on that picture. I hope that whoever it is does email it to me. I'd love to see what he's referring to. I'm confused. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. Yeah. Okay, uh, the pictures of, now I had, uh, two different pictures of the site and one is like the main building and one I think was from when it was first done, or probably not first done, maybe a little later because it had several buildings, uh, spanned out over a pretty good size area there. 
and yeah, uh, it, it's, it had a bunch of had a bunch of dormitories and a bunch of barns and chicken coops and all kinds of things. Right. And it said something about a cobblestone building that was built when they started adding uh, the insane mm-hmm. people there. Yeah, I don't have any photos of that. I wish I had. I don't. I've never been able to find one. Okay. Is the building not there anymore? Or? No. All, all the dorms are gone. All the, all the white buildings and barns are gone except for two. Um, and uh, the cobblestone building was gone way before anything I've ever seen pictures of. So, go ahead, so, Hank. And, yeah, yeah. I was going to get to it. Johnny has asked. Okay. Okay, Johnny. Uh, if you could, if you can, if you can tell us about movie nights at the asylum. We're having a movie night right now, actually. Um, and we only have one more left for the season. Basically, we do classic horror double features in our, actually, the chapel, and it's, uh, it's projected up over a coffin, so that's kind of fun. And uh, you get a teaser tour of the building. It's just a short 15-minute, just a little teaser tour. And everyone gets a snack and a soft drink or water, and it's $20 per person. So two movies, a teaser tour, a snack and a drink per person, 20 bucks. So... Last last week we actually had uh, we showed what did we show we showed um, Night of the Living Dead and Nightmare and Wax and we had a zombie costume contest and unfortunately the only three people that dressed up was myself Brad and my my volunteer Carla we were all zombied out and nobody showed up in a costume so we had to start doing uh, trivia zombie trivia to hand out the prizes so oh well we were sports and nobody else wanted to get dressed up. Okay, I'm looking at the picture. There is in this in this order: Aaron, Zach, and try that again. Aaron, Zach, and Nick. And right behind Nick, I see a faint shadow of something. And if there was some way that I could is load this on this, my website, it's on the website. That's what I. That's where he found okay. it. Okay. Do you know what page it's on? I have like a hundred and something pages on the website. And some so, um, pages. Uh, does he know what page it was on? It's under. Hold on. All right, Jay. Uh, no, let's go to Okay. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can save it and then I can. Oh, good. Can All right. Is it on the Ghost it? Adventures link? I'm gonna open up that and see if it's on there. Cause I, I... No, it's not on the Ghost. I don't. I don't know. He's not. I mean, I don't know where he might have gotten the photograph. I don't, I mean, if it's, Let's see. I'm can looking at the Ghost Adventures. Can I, there's, he, no, it, on, appara- no, apparently it's from your, from your side. Okay, so okay. I'm trying to look and see. It says it's inside. Hmm. Now, uh, uh, is there a woman standing behind him? In the picture? You know, I didn't see that until just now. No, 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 right no, a real head. woman, no, like no, a no, breathing... No, 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 Okay, um, I'm at, I'm seeing pictures outside. I only see one picture that's inside, and that's got a woman behind him. It's a, it's a doorway type of thing. Mm, I'm on the Ghost Adventures web, um, the Ghost Adventures link, so unless it's on a different page on my website... All you can do is email it to me. I don't decide. I don't know where it is right now. I honestly don't. So far, it's working. I sent it to your email. Okay. Well, hopefully, it'll come so through on my when, end. When, when you when you get it, when you get it, everything will be fine. So, well, I have a little bit of a delay because I have satellite out here, so ah, uh, may not come through for fifteen twenty minutes. It's hard to say. So. But, anyway, um, moving along. Moving okay, along. Ghost Lover. I guess that's how you pronounce that. It's not. Yeah, that's how you'd pronounce it. L U B B E R. Right. Uh, was saying that, and I, and I agree. Uh, a person does not have to die on a property for their spirit to be on the property. I agree as well. It can be attached to anything—a person, an item. Absolutely. She says, why not just focus on the child's energy and ask in these radio shows EVP can and has been present? And I agree with that. I'm sorry. Ask, 
ask what during the radio show? Uh, just, I guess, basically, just ask if there is a child present, or a child's spirit present. Present where in the photo? In the picture, in the picture, I think is what she means. At the location. Well, well, I mean, we have a lot of children's spirits. I just don't know what picture she's referring to. I um, thought she's talking about the one that Toby was was talking about earlier. We have lots of children's spirits. I think that's what she was referring to, is he was seeing the, the, the spirit child behind Zach in the picture. Okay. And you were saying that you didn't see anything, any spirit there, but you can ask if there's a spirit of a child in the picture behind Zach, and he may be able to tell you, he or she, whichever well, it Well, um, Well, possibly, but I'm in my house, so since I don't want to love him in my house, even if I saw the Paula photo, I wasn't going to ask about it right now because I'm in my house and they're not supposed to be in my house. So, um, I would have to wait till I was up at the building to, and bring the photo up there. This is my buffer zone. They're not allowed in my house. I, I understand. Just, just <laughs> reporting what she said here. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I just, I honestly just don't know what the photograph is. But if you want to move on to something else, I'd be glad to talk about it. <laughs> okay. She said call her Laura. Hello, Laura. He said he sent the picture off, too. I don't know. Okay, like that. I said, it takes a little while. Sometimes I have satellite. I live out in the country. We don't have cable. So it may not be for a while until it comes through. In the pajamas. In the white jammies. <laughs> yeah, not in her house, Laura. She's created that buffer zone, and everybody's... Everybody's playing with the rules. Exactly. So that would that would have to be held at a, that would have to be done at a at another time in that location. Maybe she should just come out here on a ghost hunt, and then she could go and ask herself. <laughs> there you go. That would be that, that, that way, you know, because she could bring the picture and show me because I have no idea what she's talking about. Well, Toby, so. Toby's got plans of coming out there on his way to uh, New Jersey. And he'll oh, okay. probably if he if he if you haven't gotten the photo by then, ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what? It was not out of all possibility. Now we wouldn't laugh for cut up none on this show, just so you know. Uh. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. What are some of the events that Rolling Hills has coming up? CJ's asking. For the oh, we have a lot of different events. We have, um, we're actually trying to branch out and do other things besides ghost hunting. This used to be a community property, and so we're trying to bring it back to the community. But um, we have everything from cruising car shows, um, you know, where if you have a classic car, really cool, like, you know, really cool white rod or, you know, motorcycle or something, we're doing cruising car shows, um, car events. And we also have the, mu- the movie nights, of course. We have Brian Kano from Haunted Collector um, doing an event out here oh, cool. on the Stardia, which is going to be pretty amazing. We're going to be doing it's going to be a whole night of experiments, different audio experiments, um, different video experiments, things, equipment that you might not have seen before. I don't want to hit my hand. Um, or, or at least not seen in person, which is something that's really, really interesting. Um, so we're doing that August 30th. We have an art show coming up with a gentleman named James Picard out of British Columbia. He's a very well-known um, fine artist, and he does uh, this series called The Dark and the Wounded. And it's about dark times in history and in people's lives. And he actually is taking over the whole asylum, and his whole artwork will be through there. He's working with a very well-known composer. There will be music going throughout the building, um, special lighting, wine and cheese, no ghost hunt. It's strictly an art exhibit. And a very, it's going to be like a very um, upper scale event, um, and that's going to be amazing. Tickets are only twenty five dollars. You can buy it right through James Picard's website, and that's going to be amazing. We've got, um, as I said, very excited about the Blue Brothers coming back October thirty first and first. All during the month of October, we're having um, our special Halloween tours, and uh, it's just a shorter version of um, a really good tour and a ghost hunt, and we do probably three of them a night, um, each three hours long. So it's a pretty busy time right now. 
Do you want to take those questions, Roger? Uh, hold on a second. We got a question from Johnny here. Oh, we got Can three questions. Can Sharon then. tell us about the UFO activity in the area and if she thinks they are related to the ghostly activity in the building? I do think they're related to the ghostly activity in the building, and we have tons of UFO activity out here. Um, we can be, my boyfriend and I will be sitting on our back deck on a rare occasion we have an evening off, and we actually see them go very low over the tree line, very low, like very barely above the tree line, um, right across the edge of our property, and they just appear, and they're silent, and they glide over, and they disappear. Um, we see all kinds of light anomalies. Um, I've seen the black triangle craft fly over low. Um, we've actually gotten very interesting photographs of what appears to be gray or green type alien um, pictures of in rolling hills, I hate to say it. Um, I think it, it is all related. As a matter of fact, yesterday my volunteer and really good friend Julie, her aunt and her mother, who are both in the Rolling Hills and are very good friends with their family, they live out in the Rochester area, and they both on, I think it was Saturday, independently from each other, but the same night, filmed a very odd glowing orange ball in the sky that just stayed there hovering, and uh, I just forwarded it on actually to move on. Now, it's funny you mention orange ball hovering in the sky because I seen five of those a long, many, many, many years ago uh, out in the country. We, I used to live in a little bitty, uh, you wouldn't even call it a town, but uh, like two or three miles out in the country, it was a little country store where I used to go to, and I happened to pull up one day. And another lady was coming out getting ready to leave, and I was getting out of my vehicle, and we both looked up and seen five of them in like a straight line formation just hovering there. Wow. And about the time that we looked up and, and saw them, they shot off and like disappeared in about two seconds. Yeah, I really do believe um, that there is a very big correlation. And again, another probably very unpopular train of thought, um, but you know, who's to say we're not the aliens? You know, who's, I mean, look at all the, the history with, like, the Egyptians and the, and the hieroglyphics and, and all the different um, different countries and different, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here, but all the different, um, like, uh, the Mayans and all their cultures that right. I was trying to reach for, that, you know, all the different drawings that they have all represent somebody that looks like they're wearing, like, some sort of a, a rounder helmet or the alien eyes and the long necks and they come from the sky and they come from beams, beams and rays of light. Right. I, mean, I mean, honestly, I think we're pretty naive uh, if we don't understand and really believe that there is other life forms out there. And well, it's the cave drawings possibly. also. Mm-hmm. You know, where uh, on the cave drawings, there, there was like drawings, they'd be like, of them hunting with the spears and the animals, and then all of a sudden there might be this person who looked like they were in a space suit. Exactly, exactly, which brings me back to what probably partly where I come from in my train of thought and my lack of belief in, you know, some of the things that are common stream. I mean, I don't believe in Adam and Eve. Sorry, guys. I believe in evolution, and I also believe that evolution must come from other avenues rather than just from apes. I mean... Like, like we're just having this conversation now. Who's to say how we, are, how this earth actually got populated? We really don't know. You know, we really don't. There's so, it's, it's too much that all these different cultures have the same common thread going through it in all their documentation. So, I don't know. I think we have a lot to learn. I think that there's a lot that, that the government and, um, other hierarchies also already know, and that if they actually truly shared the knowledge that they have, it would be mass hysteria, because a lot of people can wrap their mind around it. I really do. And I don't mean to, you know, I probably getting off a way too big a tangent, but it's funny how this field really opens your mind and your eyes to a lot of different things. You, uh... Okay, yeah, we got a break coming up, folks. We're live on WCJV Digital Broadcasting out of Youngstown, New York. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't we go got away. A few questions. We got a few questions. We'll get to them. We'll get to them.
Rats. I hope I get that picture. I'm looking for it. <laughs> You are listening to WCJV Digital Broadcasting, Youngstown, New York. Hey everyone, this is Christian Wallace, and I'll be tackling the taboo topics of news, politics, and entertainment Wednesdays at 9 Eastern Standard Time on Information Radio Show. Join me there. We're back, everybody. Uh, I was just reading where uh, Ghost Lover wrote, Hank, Laura, I'm sorry. I, Hank, I hate to say this because you're going to think I'm kissing up, and I'm not, but you you sound absolutely made for radio, CJ. That doesn't remind <laughs> you of anybody. Your, your voice is perfect for this. <laughs> I'm, you you well, are not touching. You don't to say my voice sucks or what? You, I'm not touching with a 10-foot pole. Uh, <laughs> ghost lover, Laura, that's what they've been telling me, and I know you only speak truth. I know that, dear. Now, <laughs> now that we're now that we're back and we got that out of the way, and she likes the music. Cool. <laughs> we had we had CJ work that up for us. Now, yeah. Back to the questions. Okay. Now, Toby would like to know if. Anybody has caught full body apparitions during the daytime uh, out in the tree line? And there's another question, which is going to be also for you. Uh, Dita has asked, are you doing anything special on All Hallows' Eve, or what I lovingly refer to as Sawn, since I'm Wiccan anyway? Or I, what I referringly, lovingly refer to as Halloween. <laughs> Well, um, as far as the, uh, the full body uh, apparitions close to the tree line, um, I can't say that we necessarily caught things on film, but we have seen different things um, in and out of the, the tree line and by the building. Um, daytime and nighttime, even if we're not open, we, we sometimes see things walking around outside. Um, and as far as Halloween goes, as I mentioned, we're having the Booth Brothers here. Amazing reunion awesome. of cast and crew and ghost hunting, um, Q&A, meet and greet with them on um, both uh, the 31st and the 1st. We'll do some added surprises. Um, we just firmed it up, so I don't even have a promo for it yet. But uh, it should be coming out in the next week or so, so people should be watching the website and Facebook pages for that. By the way, I am apologizing now in case if anybody had heard something odd 
earlier. What I was doing was cheating a little bit, going to your website, and the next thing I know, I've got your music coming over everything. And I was like, oh. wait a minute, no, no, stop, stop. Oh, you know what? I'm looking. Is, is the person I'm referring to is it like three people in the in a, a yellow hallway, and you see the ramp down below, and there's a camera on the floor. Well, there's a camera on a stand, and uh, Zach is talking with someone because you can see their arm, and Zach is wearing this uh, this crucifix with uh, some bizarre, uh, we'll just call it bizarre angel, and there's somebody in a red hoodie with a black cap, and it looks, I can't enlarge it, there's uh, 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 two red letters like like a uh, high school or a college. Hmm. Okay, I'm looking for that picture in my original file. And that looks. Um, I, I've already sent I've already sent him a reply that that looks that looks alive. Looks like someone who's alive. It might have been on a paranormal challenge film shoot because uh, I'm not finding that picture at all. I'll just keep looking, and it hasn't come through, unfortunately, through the email. So. Okay, Kimmy's asking how many different colored orbs have you experienced yourself? Oh, oh, um, bright, bright, solid fuchsia, and like a purple, really solid, um, green, lime green, um, light blue, the whites, of course, um, gold, like a yellow gold, like a yellow light, like a traffic light, so a variety of colors, red, some with our eyes, most a lot with our eyes, some in photos. And I'm not talking about the fuzzy little um, lacy kind with the, oh, I see a smiley face in the orb. I'm talking about solid, oh, self-illuminating, very strong. I'm sorry. I, I, I've seen that with so many people, and it's like no wonder people have worries about what is an orb and what isn't an orb and just totally dismiss it right offhand without actually studying to see what orbs are. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I, 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 I... No, I mean, I just always... And, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that I don't believe... I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you if it's dust, in my opinion, or bug, or something of that sort. It literally, for me, has to be solid, 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 self-illuminating, you know, and or in motion. And if you get it on video, I'm going to be slowing that thing frame by frame. And making sure it doesn't have wings, um, and taking an account too of the weather of the of the property. Um, we got this group came in in February. Now the building starts getting cold in September, depending on the, the outside temperature. October by November it's getting really cold, and of course, no matter late November, December, you're into the 20s in the building. It gets very very cold. You have to dress like you're snowmobiling. So if you're you're in the building in February, it's been 20 degrees for three months. The chances of it being a moth or a fly or a bug are pretty well down on the bottom of the pole. Um, I know I can't stay alive in 20-degree weather. You know, so I don't think a moth can. So, you know, if you slow it down and you look at it, and, you know, you can discount that it's not a bug and it's not this and it's not that. And you kind of have to say, okay, well, it's not these things, so it's probably something else. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question here, and then I'm going to make my little comment that everybody loves. What time okay. of year does, uh, do you think is the best activity? Oh, I don't, I actually, because I'm in here so much, I can't really say that. I think it's active all the time. Um, I don't really see a correlation between weather. I don't see a correlation between the moon. I don't, I see a correlation between the people in the building being the people that actually come in and investigate. I think it's more based upon that. I think if you've got good energy yourself, you're upbeat, you're communicative, you want to be there, you're anxious to learn about them and eager to learn about them, I think you're going to have better experiences. If you walk in and you're tense or you're shy or if you're scared, they're going to pull back. Um, they're not going to be so readily communicative with you. So I think the more you put out there and the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. Right. Okay, now I'm going to make my little comment about the orbs. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves to be a hater on me. But 
my idea story. of the perfect orb is the one that floats right up to my face and says, Hey, Raj, I'm an orb entity. We forgive you anyway. <laughs> okay, hey, go ahead. Anyway, how else can I follow that? Anyway, Johnny has a question. <laughs> okay. From what I've seen, some people feel for some reason they are entitled to go onto a property without permission. Wrong answer. Does yeah. Sharon have any problems with people that trespass onto the property? Oh, hell, have you not? I guess people <laughs> haven't met me. Hi, I'm Sharon. I'm the owner of the property. I have a huge problem with people trespassing. I have big orange signs everywhere <laughs> that says no trespassing. Why would you do that? Do you want me to show up at your house and walk around your backyard and try to open up your doors and get in your house? That's so horrible. Why would you do that? Um, it's, first of all, it's disrespectful. And I live on the property, so if I'm not open, I am probably need my downtime here, and I want a life like everybody else. It's uh, it's dangerous. You don't know what the land is like. I have a huge problem, and I get people arrested all the time. There's big signs that are three feet by four feet, and they say clearly, no trespassing. You know, we're a private property. Um, I am open by appointment meaning that you have to go on the website and pre-buy your ticket. There are no walk-ups. So you buy, you pre-buy your ticket, and you can come on the property. Um, as it says on the website, it's 20 minutes before the, the time, um, the check-in time. And, yeah, I have a huge problem with it, and I think that people should never trespass. Um, you know, you don't know what you're getting into. I mean, first of all, this is a private property, period, end of story. Um, but if you're going to places that are deemed abandoned, they're not abandoned. Somebody owns that property. Somebody's paying taxes on that property. Is it well maintained? Probably not. It's not for you to judge whether or not you have the right to go on there. It's somebody else's property. Somebody is paying taxes on that property. And you going on that property is trespassing. End of story. You go into a, a building that is in disarray and you get hurt, no one's going to find you. You're in the middle of the woods somewhere. Good luck to that. You know? Um, very disrespectful. I never did it when I was a private, inv- I, you know, my own teams. I never, you know, my team members or any of the groups I was involved with did that. I walked away from those groups. I used to work in the film business as a location manager. I learned to always leave a property better than, in, the, in the condition better than when you got there. And you have to respect people's boundaries. You know, unless people are willing to, you know, not put up any fight and, you know, why don't we gather a group and go start puppy and all these other people who, you know, just their regular homes and show up on their doorstep and look in their windows and open up their doors and try to get in their house. It's disrespectful. Why would you do that? Sorry. Really opinionated about that. It's horrible. I hate that. Yeah, I would never do that. It's a, it's wrong on every way, shape, or form. So and, I'm and getting that's a taxi. We... I'm, I'm getting and a that... tax piece, by the way. I'm going to be getting what? some attack oh, I'm getting oh, attack oh, piece. Okay. These are very, very mean. I'm going to be getting mean geese, and they're going to be out on the property when I'm closed. So trespassers beware. It's, it is, it, it, you really can't, you really can't mean uh, to be respectful and just barge in on somebody's property. Now, according to this, doesn't mean if she approved of trespassing, does she and can, well? Basically, she did answer the question. I don't approve it, and I don't allow it. Meant, meant, <laughs> meant, does, does she encounter those kind of people? Uh, I they, do. Yeah, and they get and arrested. Answered. Yeah. And they get arrested. We call the police. They get arrested. I have sheriffs and federal marshals as part of my my uh, volunteer staff and my friends, and I have no qualms whatsoever dropping the nine one one call, and I do it quite frequently. And a paranormal team that does that does has be, no be right to be a paranormal team. Thank exactly. You. Um, put it this way. You're, you're not only going to get the wrath of Sharon and the wrath of the law, you're going to get the wrath of my spirits. And, you know, my spirits, they really do have my back. We had a break in a couple of years ago, and I did a spare box session, and they gave me the make, the model, the color of the car, and a partial license plate. Gave it to the state police. Um, this one trooper, she really does believe in the paranormal, thank God. She took me seriously, and they caught the person. So my spirits will rat you out every single time. Good for them. That's all I can say. But, Good for them. Exactly. Yeah. They're, protecting, yeah. they're protecting their home. Come on. They are. 
and they know it upsets me. They don't want. They don't want to see me upset. So I don't know. I'm sorry. That that's a real big no, no, force. No, no, with no, me. no, 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 no. <laughs> and, Do not I, apologize. Yeah, and, it's, and, it's, and it's just not with me. I I feel that way about other people's you know haunted locations. Um, I used to be in California. And I've been up to Wolf Manor several times. I met Todd, who owns Wolf Manor. And he's posted on his, on his Facebook page many times. People have broke in, trying to start a fire in the building. And I'm outraged for him. I mean, how dare people do that? It's not their property. You know? Would you? Would anyone think about going into, I don't know, unless you're a thief, a Walmart when they're closed, or a museum, or any place? You know? Your friend's house? Well, if it's locked up and they're on not, vacation. It's still trespassing. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Why, I mean, nobody would ever think about doing that normally. So why? what gives them the right? Because they want to come in and check out the property. I'm open pretty much, if I don't have it on the calendar, five days a week, I'm open by appointment. You know, if you want to book a private hunt and I'm closed, I'll be gladly. If you want to pay me to open up the door and I can, you know, put that money towards buying more gutters and stuff, I'll absolutely be open for you. You know, there's too many options on my website and on other locations' website that you can go and enjoy these properties. Why be disrespectful and cause damage and trespass? Which, well, you know, also, what gives uh, them entitlement? You know, if you're a paranormal team and you do that and you get caught, which I hope you do, uh, you know, that's your reputation that you're putting at stake there. You know, and just, and are you going to be welcome at any other place? No. People need to know, us, all of us that own locations, we share information amongst ourselves. We will let each other know all the other locations, the popular locations. We email and call each other when we've had trespassers or break-ins or thieves or whatever. We know who it is and they've been rightfully caught and we're there and we know for a fact who they are. We let each other know, and you go on a ban list, so you will not be welcome at other locations. Exactly. I get calls from other locations, and I call other locations. I have other people's back, and they have my back, and well, we band together on that. So, see, you know, have only, at it if you want it. But. Not only that, but, you know, who's going to call you for a private, uh, for a, a, a residence investigation if they know that, you know, you were busted for breaking into a place like that or any other place you know i mean you're you're setting yourself up for a bad reputation with the whole community it's true who's going to trust you you know i wouldn't want a team that's been caught trespassing coming and doing a private investigation in my home i can't exactly. trust you in my home you got sticky fingers you know you're going to pick up a candle or a, your knickknack off the shelf because you like it you feel like you're entitled to it that's horrible people don't you know i don't know Whole different train of thought. It's just odd. I don't understand people sometimes. People wonder why I like my ghosts and my animals better than I like people. People <laughs> are the only ones who disappoint you and hurt you. Exactly. People, people disappoint you. They hurt you. They betray you. They break your heart. Well, if you show people and the spirits respect, they will respect you. If you show them disrespect, they're going to disrespect you. That's true. Whether they be yeah. living or dead, you know, it don't matter. That's true. That's true. Now, so. Toby's, Toby's asking, do you feel a female presence around while you're out work, uh, when you're working? Now, he's specified not in your home, but when you're out in the, in the buildings. There are hundreds of women there. We have many, many that we communicate with on a on a regular basis last night um we had a, a private investigation with one of my very dear 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 volunteers he's been coming here since he was on a teen hunt my first year i was here he's now 21 almost 22 years old and he's moving to savannah georgia so he's been coming here for almost five years so i've owned the place he's an um, escape rope from south Glen falls paranormal he's a great young investigator very respectful very mature beyond his years, and I can't say enough wonderful things about him. And Savannah's gaining a great, not only a great investigator, a great, a great person. He's a wonderful, wonderful person, and I'm going to miss him terribly. And he, uh, we were having a, a you know, barbecue, and we were just doing some last investigating ourselves with, you know, having a private investigation fun time. And we were in the building last night, and we were hearing 
full-on conversations of women talking. And two of uh, my other friends and volunteers were down by the, by the monitor, the DVR monitor. So we walked you down, and we said, gosh, you guys are talking on the water. And they said, we're not saying a word. We haven't said anything in at least 20 minutes. We're just sitting here watching you guys on the cameras. And all of us were just like, what? We could have sworn it was Julie and Shelly. And there was full-on conversation. So hopefully we, we got it on the recorder or at least one of the recorders. I had full-on conversation back and forth for 20 minutes. Unbelievable stuff. Toby's, want, Toby's trying to get more specific. Basically, is there someone in, that you have come to know that you know that has been working around you? Um, is he talking about a resident or you know a former inmate of, of Wally Hills or a personal no, person that passed away in my life? Yeah, I'm waiting for him to answer that now. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I mean, he, he's, he's saying a, I think I should have been more specific. One that personally, he says. Oh, um, actually, yeah. My, it's so funny you should say that. My mother passed away 13 years ago, and this past this, this past Thursday, actually, I was locking up the building, and my boyfriend Brad. Um, was down the house, and I let the last group of people out, and all of a sudden I heard a woman hollering, Sharon, Sharon, like really, really loud. And I thought, and I knew, I knew who it was, but talking yourself out of it, I thought, okay, I'm gonna go back to the door, back to the rent, maybe someone left something in the building, and it's one of the attendees, and I look out the door, and all the cars are pulling out the driveway, do, 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 driving away, and I locked the door back up, and I went into the Green room. I'm never in five years. I have never been afraid of anything in that building, ever. I'll go in that building day or night, walk around, no flashlight, pitch dark, doesn't matter. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. Love the place. I could call Brad on the watch. He said, "Honey, you gotta come up here. The little we got right now it was my mother, and I hadn't heard her in 13 years, ever since she died. And it was just like I was in my house in New Hampshire, and." You know, when I was, you know, in my 20s or something or my teens and she was out in the barn and she was hollering up for me, it was that tone. And then coincidentally, on Friday, I had psychic medium Karen Reese come out because we were filming a promo for her show and we're up in the infirmary and she goes, your mom's here. She goes, tell her, and your mom wants me to tell you, don't be afraid of her. She just wanted to talk to you. And I'm like, well, she's scared the living I was like, I can't have me because I hadn't heard her in 13 years. And then she goes, who's Carol? I said, well, that's my aunt. She goes, well, she's with you or with her, with your mother too. And then she went on to say some other things. I won't get into all the personal stuff. But, yeah, it was just this week. She just started becoming very vocal to me. And literally wigged me out. When I walked out the, the building that night on Thursday with Brad, I was walking out the door and I'm walking across the driveway to the house and I'm just bawling because it just was so unsettling to me. I mean, I was glad to hear her. But it took me such a shock by surprise that it just threw me for a loop. It's funny you should ask that. No, that's I, I know Toby, and I, I know what's going on. So, mess, mess, message delivered. Don't worry. So it's really interesting he should bring that up. Very interesting. And that's two. That's, that's Karen Reese and now Toby. So, well, Toby, Toby is uh, my psychic medium on, on my... Uh, Renegade Investigators of the Paranormal Team. Oh, excellent. Well, I'd be interested if he has any, anything else he wants to share with me regarding my mother or any of the family members that had been in that day. I'd be very interested to hear what he has to say. So. You, you, had, you had to go and feed his ego. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, I mean, there's something, going, there's, there's something going on where obviously she needs my attention for some reason all of a sudden. Um, and so I am very interested in no, he'll get back um, yeah, for that later. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be doing a spare box session sometime very soon. But um, yeah, <clears throat> throw me for, I mean, throw me for a loop, and I don't get thrown for a loop very easily in this building at all. You know, I mean, usually it's like, oh yeah, well, you know, that happens. Oh yeah, oh well, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, I, it's not that I'm so blasé about it. So I've been, I'm here twenty four seven for five years. So do the math. I'm here all the time. So things that other people may find shocking is now my everyday life. It's not shocking at all. It's normal. You so, can. but when you hear your mother that you haven't heard in 13 years out of the blue in your haunted location, kind of throws you for a little bit of a loop. Well, it doesn't take. I mean, it, yeah, it has to take a lot to to surprise 
you when you have been doing any kind of paranormal investigation at any at any time. Toby says he's going to stop right there. He would love to be able to talk to you personally. Um, on that note, uh, the other information that you have, like your Skype and your phone number, I'll go ahead and post it. Yes? No? Great. Thank you. Yes, sure. Okay. I don't use Skype very often, and just so everyone knows, the phone number, the 585 number, um, goes directly into a voicemail, so you have to leave me a message. I get so many people that just don't leave a message, and they hang up. I call people back. Every day I check it. Every day I call people back. I'm really good. I used to be in sales and marketing for years. I call people back. I promise you I'll call you back. You have to leave me a message. And the reason why I have voicemail and not a direct phone number on there is because in the building I have zero or very little cell phone service, so I don't get calls anyway. So leave me a message. I will call you back. I promise. So please don't so, hang up. So just, so just the, uh, the, that uh, uh, 714 number? No, not or the, the 714. Five, 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 okay. five, 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 yep. Okay, voicemail only. All right. Yep. Not I so, will post, post the other you. one, please. <laughs> Thank no, no. you. I will, I will post yeah. that for you. Well, yeah, it's, it's, right honestly, there with your, it's, right, it's right there with your Rolling Hills Asylum information. Correct. So, all right. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, like I said, please do leave a message. It's so frustrating for me when people call and hang up. I want to help them. They obviously need a, they have a question that they want to have answered. I'm happy to call people back. Really, truly am. I have a couple of questions for you. One is from Johnny wants to know, what is your favorite paranormal tool to use on an investigation? Well, um, I'm going to say something lame, and then I'm going to say a couple other things. I'm going to say the lame answer, which is myself, because now I, you know, obviously being here 24-7, you know, I don't have time to review everyday audio, I would just have nothing else to do but review audio or pictures or whatever, or video. So I say myself, because I like the personal experiences down here. Um, oh. On my tours, I'm always carrying a bell meter. I like, there's like 14, 15 different models now. I like the ATDD one. Personally, it's with the hot and cold spot um, detector on it, plus the temperature and the EMF. And for me, during the tours, and for the people that I give the tours to, it gives them a good... Um, idea where the hot spots are, which is pretty much everywhere in the building. It also shows them that the building is pretty flat line at zero zero EMF unless there's an entity coming by and, and raises the EMF. It's a nice visual for them and I, I really do like that tool very much. Um, I like audio. I love it. My spirits are very talkative. They're very communicative. We get a lot of class A and I'm gonna go on a limb and say double A, a triple A, <laughs> uh cl- Really clear, distinct EVPs without having to tweak them at all. Very, very, very good conversations. Um, and I love Spirit Box. I'm really big on the Frank's Box Spirit Box train. I love that. Um, and I love, I love taking pictures. But again, for me, I don't have a lot of time to review a lot of stuff anymore. Unfortunately, people think I live, I'm like a tin in a candy store, and I am. But on the other hand, I also have to maintain the property, do all the sales, the marketing, the website. You know, there's a lot of backdoor stuff that people don't see. Um, it's literally three, you know, four or five full-time jobs wrapped up into one owning a property. Awesome. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so for me, it's on my regular basis, I love just going out, sitting, you know, sitting in a room or sitting in a hallway and, you know, hearing and seeing and feeling what I feel and see and do. And the more people, people have to realize, the more you do this, the more you throw yourself out there, the higher you're your senses become, the more heightened your senses become. Right, and, right. Absolutely. And you will, you will see things more. You will hear things more, smell things and, and, and feel things more. Um, you know, are you going to go in every time into a room and, you know, and be blessed with, you know, hearing a voice in your ear or seeing a full body apparition walk in front of you? Hell no. I mean, that's too easy. Why would that happen? But the more you do it, the more experiences you will get like that if you're open-minded to it. And don't second-guess yourself. Just because your friend who's sitting beside you or fellow investigator isn't hearing or seeing or smelling the same thing doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that you imagine it. It just means sometimes you're the only person that's meant for. Exactly. So don't, don't discount that. And don't let your friends or your fellow investigators, you know, make you doubt yourself. Um, you know, people tend to doubt themselves too much. You can't do that. And I have to ask you, 
if you have seen or had a report of an elderly lady that is wearing like a long white uh, nightgown with like, I, I can't exactly tell you for sure what the designs are, but it's like little blue, uh, I want to call it like bird wings or, you know, it's, it's like the little curly designs on it. I personally have not seen someone like that. Um, and this is another issue that I share with a lot of the other location owners and managers. We get hundreds and thousands of investors coming through our doors. Love it. Grateful. More than people know. We're really grateful for people to come and experience what we have here. Unfortunately, people do not share their evidence. They're standing in, you know, in our common room, our green room, and they come in and they'll play amazing EDP they just got or show us a clip of video or amazing photograph. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. We never get it. Well, we never the, reason, get it. the reason I asked is because you were talking about sitting in the hallway and, and you know, seeing what you see and hearing what you hear. And that picture just popped into my head all of a sudden right when you said that of a oh, woman, might be elderly somebody. woman standing in the hallway, like, Far from you, but like down the hallway. I did this. see one woman down the hallway once, not too long ago, actually. But she wasn't wearing a nightgown. She was wearing a terry cloth, um, like a blue terry cloth bathrobe, and she was had pajamas on. And the bathrobe was the, the tie was swung low on her hip, and you know, so it tied really low below her her waistline. And she had like auburn, reddish auburn hair, kind of darker. Um, kind of a square oval face, and she had her hat hung down, and the hair was kind of stringy hanging her face, and she was there, and she was gone. She okay, was this, 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 and she was gone. this lady has like dark hair with some gray in it, uh, kind of a roundish face. Uh, Oh, uh, what was the neckline like on her? Now, I'm was guessing like- her age to be probably close to mine, maybe a little older, between 55 and 60. Um, kind well, of what, short, was neck, what was kind the of neckline on, on, her, on, her, on her gown? Was it like a V-neck or high collar or round or it's, square? It's or like the older type. Uh, gowns where, you know, they're not low cut or, you know, they kind of just come up around your neck. Hmm. So I did get a picture once of a lady. She had grayish hair, upswept, and she had a square neckline and it was a whiter color. I don't, I don't know. I, like I said, there's hundreds of people. We've been nursing them the last 10 years and we had a whole floor of elderly ladies and a whole floor of elderly men. So... And that's just the last 10 years. Of well, the and it could be, them. you know, because it was a nursing home, so it could have been a nursing home patient. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have no clue. I just know that when you said that, the, I got this picture of this woman standing like at, I won't say the end of the hall, but like way further down the hall from where you would have been. Mm-hmm. And not really lit up, but. You, you could tell what she was wearing, except for I couldn't make out what the little blue things were. Uh, whether they, they kind of looked like little outswept bird wings. Hmm. I'll you know, like my, how, my eyes, my eyes and ears open. Um, we'll be in there later on tonight and tomorrow. Like I said, uh, you know, my, my dear friend Steve broke. He's, uh, staying his last couple of days here with us and then he'll be moving to Savannah. So we're doing some last minute just fun stuff I'm having. It's kind of like my mini vacation at home. Um, and so Brad and um, our other volunteer, his friend Colin from his team and his girlfriend, and it's just the five of us, and we're we're just doing our own stuff for the last, next couple of days with experiments, and we're getting some really amazing stuff, and it's fun. It's, it's, I don't ever get a chance to really investigate my own property. It sounds crazy. <laughs> it really does. It really, really does. But, um, you know, when I have you know, attendees here, they're my guests, so I'm here to make their experience better. So I'm not doing my thing, I'm helping them or and that could be if it's a private investigation, me staying out of the way, you know, and being right. in the green room. Right. You know? So I mean I don't I put 
other people's experiences ahead of my own in the building. Um, if I'm in there working, of course, but, you know, I'm getting personal stuff. So it's fun for me. The last couple of days, I actually laid on the morgue table. Had the morgue table for four and a half years. Never laid on my own morgue table. Laid on it last night. Had the weirdest sensation ever. People have been experiencing. Dave Giuliano from Governor's Store actually had this experience. He felt like he was getting compressions on his chest, and then he felt like he was being held down. And then Bob Christopher from Ghost Detectives was there, and he had to literally pull him up off the table. Um, and that happens quite a bit. We get people that feel like they're getting compressions on their chest, and then their whole chest is red, like people have been pushing on their chest. Um, Brad laid on the table last night, and he felt like he got sliced open, like with a wow. scalpel down his chest. For me, I'm laying on the table, and I felt like they were pulling on my ankles and pulling me off the table. I kept saying, am I moving? Am I moving? I can feel myself sliding off the table. They're pulling on my ankles. I could feel my... It was like if you've ever been to a chiropractor and they pull on your legs and try to adjust you and you're, right. you know, and you're, you're feeling your, your, all of a sudden your back is starting to like relax and stretch out and your buttocks is all being pulled and your legs are being slid down and you feel like you've blown like an inch or two because they're pulling all your, 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 they're stretching you out. I felt they were pulling my legs and my ankles and I was being moved off the table. I was literally wow. felt I was being pulled. And they kept saying, no, you're not moving. I said, I'm telling you, I'm moving. I could feel that I was moving. And it was a, and I felt like I have to get up. I feel like I'm going to fall off the table. And they said, you're nowhere near the edge. I'm like, I'm telling you, they're pulling me off the table. Well, it, was a, person, it was the weirdest sensation. This person is fond to you and seems like, from what I gather, a really friendly, outgoing type spirit. Oh, well, I hope they're fond of me. I love them. I saw... I, you know, if you're ever here, you'll see, I walk in, you know, I walk in the building, I'm like, hi, everyone, it's Sharon, happy, blah, 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 whatever day it is, and this is what we're having, and this is who's coming, and oh, someone's happy to be coming back today, and, and at the end of the night, I walk there and say, thank you very much, and I love you, and, you know, you don't have to interact with everyone, and I know you do, and, you know, you, you know, people had a wonderful night, and I really appreciate it, and I say it every day, every day, every night. Um, they don't have to talk to us. They don't have to be kind to us. If they can slam the door... They can pick you up and slam you down the flight of stairs if they want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, and, pe and people forget that. They interact with us because it's out of the kindness of their heart. And well, they want people, to who, people who think a spirit can't hurt you better wake up because they it's, can. They can. They absolutely can. You know, it's like having, I don't know, some big pro wrestler. Can he be a gentle giant and be able to hold a little infant baby with a tenderness that would surprise you? Of course he can. Can he break you in two and slap you like <laughs> right, a twist? Exactly. Of course he can. You know? Exactly. I mean, you know, people have to remember they're just people and they have power like anybody else does. But well, we, have, we had found out by, um, how shall I put this? I, I want to use the term by accident, but... One of my uh, co-founders, Ron, we went into a location, and he made the mistake of saying, if anything is going to happen, let it happen to me. And by, by the breath that I take, it happened to him. Yep. That was surprising. He was, he was slammed, and yet... I'm in there, in the same location, and everything is calm, hunky-dory. As a matter of fact, I have an English lady that is waiting with bated breath for me to visit again. Oh, wow. Nice. Now, back to Rolling Hills. I have seen pictures of a... Uh, of, of the baby carriage, this, this black baby carriage. Uh, the adventure, uh, the ghost adventure boys, GAC boys, as I lovingly refer to them, he is doing something with this, or there's a, an extra doing this. A, is that still there? And B, are you, are there any experiences with that specifically? Um, the baby carriage, yeah, we still have the baby carriage, and that whole room is pretty active. You'll hear a baby crying. 
out of the playpen, sometimes with your ears. Um, it's just, it's very active in that room with kids. And actually, I just got the picture. It's Zach with the black shirt on the cross, and there's a gentleman with a hoodie behind him. Yeah, that's just a person. That's just a crew member behind him. That's just a real life breathing person. And I did read that uh, they also had, like, uh, unwed mothers there. Yeah, yes, they did. Yeah, yep. the orphanage. Widows, and- orphans. Yep. Okay, I think Johnny's got a question. Just a second here. Was there ever a resolution with the Kane Hodder incident? I don't know what he's talking about. Um, don't want to discuss that. Thank you. It's a, it's a moot point. Not worth discussing. Not worth giving him any added attention. Okay, I didn't read anything about that, so I won't go into that. But <laughs> but anyway, yeah. uh, I thought I'd tell you about your friend there. She, she's quite fond of you, it seems like, so <laughs> kind of watch out for her. I hope I see her. And I hope it's I not see so her. much her a great big thank you. No, no, I'll, not, I'll give her a great big yeah. thank you. Yeah. It's not Do so much I, watch out. Is like, it's, it's not so much watch out as in... They, they they want to let you know that they're there. Oh, right. absolutely. Um, there's another picture that someone had sent. It's the three three uh, the three amigos here, Aaron, Zach, and, and Nick, and that's not at my location. I don't know where that one is. There's a window in the background. Not my not my house. <laughs> not my not place. Not your house. You finally got my email. Yeah, that's not mine. Hey. But um, the oh. other the other one with the guy with the red hoodie. That's just a crew member behind him. That's yeah. That's what I thought. That's that's why I explained yeah. to him. Yeah. But being being the medium that he is, uh, I, I can only I can only suspect he saw something that we didn't. Mm-hmm. So that that would also account for a variety of other other things. When I see those things like that, it don't happen often. But when it does, it usually is a spur of the moment thing depending on like uh we were discussing last show we had Hank and his team was on there and they were talking about uh a place they had been to and I got this picture of this guy being tortured and hung from a tree and come to find wow. out there was somebody hung from the tree so uh, it just happens spur of the moment like I said every now and then mm-hmm. you're you're tapping into your natural your natural abilities and talent. That's right. Bravo, mate. Bravo. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes it's kind of freaky, you know, because it will pop up there like that, and, you know, and it's so vivid and everything. It's like I'm standing right there. It's called take a deep breath and flow with it. But anyway, it's, it's <laughs> okay. funny. People are, you know, people always say, "Oh gosh, I wish I wish I was a medium." I'm not, by the way, in any way, shape, or form. I'm very, I'm sensitive. You know, I I don't think I have any. I'm not. I can't look at you and say, "Oh, your grandmother's standing beside you" or anything like that. I'm I'm not. I'm sensitive to certain things, and I pick up on certain things, but nothing in any way, shape, or form. Um, am I a medium? But people always lament, "Oh, I wish I could do this. I wish I could see. I wish I could." You know, no, you don't. I know too many mediums very well that, you know, they it, they can't shut it off sometimes, and it's it's very draining on them. And people people have got to be careful what they wish for. They really do. Exactly. Being a psychic medium, in fact, even being a psychic in any way, shape, color, or form, is a heavy and serious responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I accept. And and for my part, I accept it. And for Toby's part, he accepts it. As do I. Oh, you just wanted to be drawn into the conversation. Well, I don't. I don't <laughs> consider myself a, a psychic or a medium or whatever. I just you, see what you I have see. Your talents, Roger. You. I have see what talents. I see, and and I know what I know. <laughs> it's a matter of actually taking time and it studying is. what it is that you do know, and then. How it applies. You don't have to have a name for it. No, and sometimes I can be talking to somebody, and I will just know something, and I'll tell them. 
you know, and they may know what I'm talking about, they may not, but it's just there, and I know it's the truth it or the gospel, it. however it you want to put it, you know. So, and yeah. How, and that's how it will be. Yeah, you know, yay team. It gets a little scary <laughs> sometimes, but, you know, sure. I, I, I'm grateful that I, if I can help somebody, then I'm grateful, you know. I mean, it gives me a good feeling to help somebody. So if I sense or see something or whatever or hear something or know something that can help you and, you know, I help you and you let me know that I was able to help you, then you made my day. So, you know, I don't expect anything in return. I never have. Just that, you know, whoever I help is going to have a better Today or tomorrow or next week or next year, you know, that's that's plenty of payment for me. Mm-hmm. Had an interesting conversation with a, a friend of mine and Hank's this morning, matter of fact. Uh, Hank, you might need to talk to Sonia. She's needing a little, uh, a little help. Okay. As soon as I can get a hold of her. Uh, I hadn't, I hadn't seen or heard any postings from her. Okay, well, she messaged me private and was telling uh, me about this stuff, and I told her she would right. to talk to you about it. So uh, if she does or if she don't, maybe you should holler at her. Tell her I sent you. <laughs> not, not a problem. Anyway, uh, we're getting off track here. Uh, Sharon, this, is, this has been awesome, and uh, I would love to come there. Uh, now, and I say this, and, and I don't say this so anybody feels bad for me or anything like that, but I'm disabled. I draw a little little income, so I don't travel much, but I would love to come there. I did get to go to Waverly Hills, and that is an awesome, humongous place. So jealous. <laughs> but it, it is. It's a really big, humongous place, and, and I loved every minute of it. I was there for eight hours, so, yeah. <laughs> I would, love, no. I would love to go to Rolling Hills. That's that's one of the places I, on my bucket list if I ever hit the lottery. <laughs> uh, okay, D- D- Adita, if I remember correctly, she doesn't do walk-ins per se. You, there's always the appointment. Dita was asking, what is Sharon's next open a public event, open to the public event, or do you have one? Oh, we're, we have uh, public hunts every week. Um, what is today? I don't even know what today is. Today is Monday. Thursday night. Thursday is our, for our next public hunt. Is that what you were asking, Dita? All they have to do is go on the website, rollinghillsofsarlem.com, and then go to the August calendar. Yeah, that's what I've been down posting. On the left side, uh-huh. Yeah, right in the left sidebar. And you scroll <laughs> down, and all the dates and times and pricing are right on there. We have... Um, public ghost hunts that start as low as $30. You get an hour and a half tour and an hour and a half to wander around, it's 30 bucks. You can't buy a pizza and get it delivered for 30 bucks. And that's just going to make you fat. <laughs> well, I was going to say, yeah, I can, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm here. You you can. I'm here. That- I'll be in the middle of nowhere. They charge you $8 delivery, so I don't even, you know, now, go down that road anymore. Well, you threw in the do part you, about getting fat. Yeah, it's like, yeah well, you can't <laughs> argue with that one. Do you do the, the price comparison thing? Because now I can get one from Pizza Hut for 10 bucks. so. Oh, come on. Yeah, but they won't deliver out here. You forget. I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Actually, I just had a, we just had a, we just had a pizza delivered, um, oh, for our friends here the other night. And uh, the local pizza place that I'm now, I now started to deal with that they're going to deliver, they wrote, and I was kind of offended by it, but it was kind of funny in the long run. They run on the side of the box, Rolling Hills, Rolling Hills Nut House. Gee, thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Here I am, you know, advertising for you on my website, you know, sponsored by blah, blah, blah. And now they call me a nut house. So that's okay. I'm in a good place. <laughs> well, now you could advertise for them, too, of, uh, uh What's the name of this place? It's Polly's Pizza in Batavia. <laughs> okay, you could call it Polly's Slop House or something, you know. Oh, but. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it was just, it cracked me up. We actually took a picture of it. It was, it would go on our, you know, just, our, just tell our them, little bloopers tell here. the favor, you know, I mean, uh. <laughs> hey, I'm one. grateful they want to deliver out here. Let me tell you. You know, we're, we're very close to Batavia. We're only like 10, 15 minutes. 
But for some reason, people either think it's like a million miles away or I think they're really just scared to come out here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I I wouldn't really do that, but, uh, you know, all in, in in the sense of humor thing there. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, uh, don't let anybody kid. Don't let don't let him kid you. If it's the first chance he gets, he's going to do it. You know. <laughs> I would use my name. What? See, <laughs> it was a ghost that did it. Yeah, it was a spirit that did it. I didn't know anything about it. So funny. But anyway, uh, <laughs> see, it, it, we like to have a little comedy in here too. You know, kind of brighten things up. But, uh, oh, absolutely. You have to. You know, Gus Heavy isn't all dark and twisty. There's a lot of, you know, we have the best time when we're just joking around amongst ourselves. And the spirits will joke around with us. We have a classroom where um, there's a, like a quiz book. And one of my friends had brought her mother in and had a recorder on the, on the desk. And so she was quizzing her mother out of the quiz book. And the question was, who's Booker T. Washington? The mother goes, oh, I don't know. Is he a peanut farmer? And the answer, according to the book, was no, he's an educator. Well, they played back the recording, and some spirit goes, what an idiot. Because she got the answer wrong. It's hilarious. They're hilarious. That's what I'm saying. People want the dark and twisties and, like, you know, kill you and, you know, Satan says die, you know. What? I'd rather have someone call you an idiot. I think it's fucking an oak cry. For you to laugh at this. I think it's hilarious. I'm a, um, I- I'm going to tell you a little story. This is a true story. And then I got uh, one for you, too. Back when I was several years younger, I used to do roofing work and all that kind of stuff. And I worked with a boy that I went to school with and everything that I knew when I was, you know, a kid. And uh, we were doing tar patch work on, on a building. It is one of the flat roof types with the gravel, you know. It's got the tar yep. and stuff on it. Yep, anyway, I have many of those. We, I we, know. We were doing some patchwork on, on this building, and if you ever mess with the tar, trust me, you get a little bit on your hand, and the next thing you know, you're wearing it. Yep. And I had it all over me, and he had gone in the building to look for another leak spot you had to measure all this out on the floor and then go up on there and find it you know and he come back up there and looked at me and took one look and started laughing and goes well what do you know we got tar baby on the roof and that <laughs> nickname stuck with me for years and i couldn't get rid of it <laughs> that's hilarious yeah no i i'm like that it doesn't matter what i'm doing if it's messy i, I wear it i my my mother, speaking of my mother, she used to always say, I'm a really good cook. But I used to cook like Julia Child, um, showing my age here. But Julia Child was a, a, a chef, for those who don't know, a cook on TV. And she used to make a hell of a mess. It didn't matter what she was making. She had flour in her hair, and she'd set the kitchen on fire. And, you know, but she's a very famous, a very well-known, very well-respected chef in the industry. Well, I cook like that. I have, I can't use one bowl. I use 27 bowls, and it's all over me. Tastes great, but I make a hell of a mess. I paint. I can't paint within the lines. I have paint all over me, in my hair, up my nose. I don't know how I do it. It's everywhere. Can't help it. Same thing. So I totally relate. Before we close out, proving that the spirits have a sense of humor, <laughs> Ed, one of my co-founders, he works with he works with rods, and he's got these two copper rods, and we're over at the old soldier cemetery, and. It's riddled with with uh, mole hills, mole mounds, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. them. And I and I trip over one, and on the EVPs, we get it. We get a response because Ed couldn't figure out his rods were just flickering back and forth, just just quick back and forth. We reviewed the tape, and I made a a, uh, <clears throat> a derogatory comment about tripping over the go uh, the molehill and the reply came back was clumsy and you heard the laugh yeah i mean they still have a sense of humor you know they're not gonna let you get away with stuff they're not gonna miss an opportunity i wouldn't (laughs) i'm uh trying to write something here in the chat room hank you got something else real quick uh do well i'm trying to find out what what i'm being asked and I've you know, and I've done the thanks for everybody too. Oh, uh, she said uh, after the show's over, she wanted to ask you a question. So, uh, oh, okay, okay. I I 
miss that part. I didn't see that on my on my side. <laughs> okay. Now, Sharon, does your your boyfriend experience a lot of of activity, or does he go like by himself in there and ever you know just hang out and experience anything or? Actually, um, the first time he was ever done anything like this was February 10th. <clears throat> we had met in January. And uh, he was a little nervous about coming in the building at night. And so we brought him in during the day. We I brought him in during the day. It was just he and I in the whole building, and we were in Roy's room. And um, I started an EDP session, and uh, basically he was hooked after that. Um, I was saying, uh, you know, it's Sharon and Brad, and we're in Roy's room, and it's October. Oh, gosh, no, I mean February 10th. And I don't know what time it is. And then you hear a woman go, quarter of four, and another woman go, in the daytime. <laughs> cool. And, and he was hooked. Um, yeah, he, he hears things. He sees people walking around. Um, he's in the building a lot because he's actually stepped up to the plate in a lot of ways. He actually um, loves the building, loves the spirits. He takes care of the building. He's doing a lot of maintenance. Um, they used to call him that guy or the maintenance guy, and now you, he's heard them say, oh, here comes Brad. So he's all like, oh, they know my name now. They like me. <laughs> so he's like all thrilled by that um, instead of just being known as that guy. <laughs> so, right. yeah, he, he loves it. He's very he's very uh, ingrained in the property now. It's, it's good. Um, it's not, I'm not an easy person. Um, my life isn't easy. Uh, you know, obviously I'm very opinionated. You've heard this tonight. I've got a lot of – I'm not shy on close to my opinions. I have an odd lifestyle, um, upside down. I go to bed at 5 in the morning or 6 in the morning, and, you know, I sometimes I get up in 4 hours, sometimes I get up in 12 hours, you know. I'm up in all hours of day and night. So, you know, I live in a haunted location. I talk to, I talk to dead people. You can't see them. Um, people would think I'm crazy. I sit in the dark and, you know, have conversations with myself, supposedly. It's really with other people. So, you know, it takes a very special person to absorb all that, and... Um, he's only absorbed it. He's embraced it. And I'm very lucky that he found me. Well, I, uh, I have a live in shadow spirit here in my bedroom. And I've told Hank about this. And my wife is the only one that's ever seen it. She woke up about three o'clock in the morning and she said it was standing in the corner over there. And at the time, I had my computer and everything in the kitchen area, so I was in there. And she said it was didn't act like it even knew she was there. It was like it was listening to me, to what I was doing. Hmm. So apparently it was watching me. Mm-hmm. Now, I haven't seen it personally, but my dog lets me know when it's out and about in here because she'll go nuts. And she'll lay under my desk at my feet or she'll stare at a certain spot on the wall, you know. Uh, and she'll do that little low growl thing. Yeah. And so she, you know, that's when I know that I, I say it's a him because my wife mm-hmm. said it was a dark figure with a hat. Uh, she thought that it was African American possibility, you know, because this, there was a duplex used to be a single house at one time. Could have been the previous owner or the the person mm-hmm. that built it, I don't know, but and I talked to him, <laughs> you know, and oh, uh, yeah. you know he hasn't answered me yet, but I talk to him all the time when I know he's in here, you know, and I'll say, you know, uh, you know, how you doing? What's going on? He apparently doesn't disapprove of us because he never has done anything harmful or you know tried to cause any any kind of grief. He just hangs around, so. Mm-hmm. I That's not he, uncommon. You know, I figure he was a, a resident that died here, or, or uh, you know, maybe he was the one that originally built the house. I don't know, but anyway, he he's my little anyway, uh, uh, my little buddy here. <laughs> it's always nice to have a buddy or two, you know. Who says that we have to grow imaginary friends that we're never imaginary to start with? Exactly. They're always there. You know, it's the time when they start talking about their imaginary friends wanting them to do bad things that you worry. Exactly. Anyway, uh, we're probably going to be getting ready to wind down here pretty soon. But uh, 
Oh, we are. Yeah, and uh, we are. I just want to let you know that we appreciate you being on, and uh, it's been a, a really good show, very interesting. And hopefully right. we can have you back sometime soon, maybe. Oh, well, I really appreciate you guys having me on. It's been a very interesting conversation. You went off on a lot of interesting topics, and, and I, enjoy, I very much enjoyed having um, the type of conversations that we had tonight. It wasn't the typical... Um, just give me the history and the paranormal stuff. We delved into a lot of different uh, areas, and it was really kept it interesting for me too. So I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Well, we're we grateful. tried to be weird that way. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to uh, give out some links, uh, real quick. Sure. Um, the website again is RollingHillsAsylum.com. We have the Brian Kano event August thirtieth. Um, it's going to be a really awesome event. We're going to do a lot of interesting experiments. Um, with some equipment that you've only seen maybe on television. So hopefully people will be buying tickets to that. And, uh, you know, check me out on Facebook. We've got the official Rolling Hills Asylum Facebook page. It's probably the best way to get the most current updates. Um, if you fill out a, a form online and get on the mailing list, email list, I don't drown you an email, I promise. I send them out maybe once every three or four weeks and you can opt out. So, you know, I don't over-saturate you, I promise. So hopefully you guys will, or, you know, people will sign up for the email list. And, you know, if you decide I'm boring, opt out of it. It's fine. No hard feelings. Awesome. Well, folks, uh, we will be back next Monday night with another show for you. And hopefully it'll be as good as this one. Uh, You're all good. What do you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I was trying to be uh, coy, you know. What, what the, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't hey, want to touch that. I mean, I, I know we're awesome and everything like that, but everybody else don't. So, just kidding, y'all. More of my sense of humor. <laughs> but uh, we'll be back next week. We've had a really good time. Thanks again, Sharon, for being here. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to come and visit your place one of these days before I kick the bucket and have to come over and spirit for one. Actually, I'd love to. Oh, Any time, I would love to go there, too. Well, come in... Uh Come in the, uh, you know, in the good weather. Don't come when it's too, too cold. I don't want you to be uncomfortable. Oh, that's the best time. Oh, anyway. <laughs> you know what? I have to wear, like, two layers of on- Under Armour ski pants. I look like I look like Randy from A Christmas Story. I can't put my <laughs> arms down. But the, the beauty of it is I'm a klutz, so if I trip going down the stairs, I just bounce. It's perfect. Right. And if you fall down, you couldn't get up? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there right, is folks. proof positive. If you can't be normal, be, be paranormal. paranormal. Exactly. We'll see you next week, folks. Good night. You are listening to WCJV Digital Broadcasting, Youngstown, New York.